A tree goes into a period of rest or dormancy in autumn and remains dormant through the winter. Dormancy is a survival mechanism that plants from very cold regions employ to prevent bud sprouting at times when freezing temperatures would prove lethal. If the buds open early in spring and then the area is hit by a spring frost, the entire crop could be lost. The buds need to receive a certain number of hours of cold between 1.5 and 12.5 and degrees Celsius, after which they will wake up on their own. For example, a golden delicious tree needs 1,100 hours of cold below 8 degrees Celsius before it will wake up. In most regions of South Africa, with the exception of the Koa Bockefeld, we very seldom get the sufficient number of chill hours. We need to do something to artificially wake up the tree. The way that farmers wake their trees is to spray a chemical rest-breaking agent onto the tree. And in this video, we're going to take a look at rest-breaking. Due to a lack of winter chilling, the use of artificial chemical rest-breaking agents is a standard practice in the majority of the fruit-growing areas in South Africa. There are a number of chemical rest-breaking agents used for deciduous fruit in South Africa. Those most used are Dormex, Lift and various mineral oil formulations. These products can be used on their own or in combination to achieve specific results. Dormex is the most potent rest-breaking spray available for apples. It's normally sprayed in combination with mineral oil. Mineral oils are softer to use but somewhat less effective than Dormex or Dormex Plus oil. There are, however, many cultivars, especially in the colder areas, where winter oil on its own can be used to good effect. The application applied to an orchard is referred to as the recipe. There are many different recipes for chemical thinning as the conditions in each orchard are unique. The recipe should be determined in consultation with a technical consultant. One of the general guideline secrets to rest breaking is to spray at the beginning of bud swell. Spraying earlier will generally force earlier bud break while spraying later in the window of opportunity will normalize bud break, meaning that it will more resemble bud break after adequate chilling. However, spraying too late increases the risk of damage to the plant. The actual spray date will be determined by the fruit kind, the cultivar, the growing area, the orchard situation, cross-pollination, temperature forecasts, the product that is being applied, Dormex, winter oil or lift, and the weather conditions before and after application. Weather conditions before and after spraying are critical to the success of chemical thinning. Warm weather after spraying leads to much better results. Temperatures over 20 degrees Celsius for three or four days after application will enhance the effect of the spray. The practices to avoid are high temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius after spraying. These high temperatures can cause phytotoxicity, which is the degree to which a chemical or other compound is harmful or lethal to plants. Avoid spraying rest-breaking agents prior to a cold front approaching. Increasing the concentration of the rest-breaking chemical enhances the effectiveness of the treatment. Unfortunately, the danger of phytotoxicity runs parallel with increased concentrations. Phytotoxicity symptoms vary from slight tip burn to dying back of entire shoots and, in some cases, of the whole tree. Overly wet soils may also increase the risk of phytotoxicity. With very early cultivars, Chemical rest-breaking sprays are usually applied from the middle of August to the middle of September, starting with plums, then pears, and finally apples. Apples have the highest chilling requirements of all fruit trees, followed by pears, plums, apricots, and lastly, peaches. The following precautions have also helped to minimize the risk of plant damage. 
Avoid spraying trees that are under stress conditions, those that are waterlogged or very dry. The oil must be in very good condition and preferably not kept over from one season to another. Avoid spraying in windy conditions. Non-bearing, narrow-spaced trees should be sprayed by hand to ensure that the application does not reach the adjoining rows, resulting in a double application. Constant stirring of the emulsion is important, therefore the stirrer in the spray pump must be in good working condition. The spray mixture should not be left in the spray tank for long periods, for example overnight. Failure to break the rest of the tree can result in delayed foliation, strong water shoot growth in the base of the tree, very few buds will develop and blossom will take place over a long period. Because of lack of winter chilling, the buds at the top of the tree may not break dormancy and the shoots at the base of the tree take over, giving the tree a shape that looks like a pudding bowl rather than the strong dominant central leader shape. This is known as having a basal dominant shape and it is a struggle to fill the tree's allocated space. This ultimately decreases the yield that can be attained. In Europe there is plenty of cold in the winter. Here we have quite mild winters. So in South Africa the farmer needs to wake up all the buds in the tree so that they will form vegetative and reproductive growth for the coming season.